So in my opinion, because of the active ingredients that are in it, it's just a good broadleaf herbicide. Hey, baby, how are you? I apologize for my wife. Not for anything I do. Did you get your organic matter levels rectified? <laughs> just, just making sure. Just making sure. I got sidetracked there. Wow. That's good. Thank you for last night. I didn't see why. So, when we're talking about herbicide resistance and the research that's coming out of UT, you know, at, at first it was rotating. We need to rotate from this to this to this to this. And then they started doing the research of combining modes of actions in single, in single tanks. So, you're doing your spot spray with two, three modes of action. And they're noticing you're getting upwards of 83 times less buildup of resistance by combining those matches. And so it kind of correlates with what you see on the market that's coming from distributors. Because again, we're not seeing a lot of new technologies. We're seeing combined technologies with a new patent on it that we have to pay a lot of money for. And I am cheap. When I sprayed yards, I was really cheap. So, this was what I would do to mitigate my cost. To be able to compete with the guys that ran 15 trucks, could EOP the entirety of the year, while I was worried about when my next check was going to come in. So, these are the types of products I'm talking about. Q4. How many people use Q4? Solitaire. <coughs> Speed Zone or the Southern version. <coughs> How many people use Last Call? I think Rod has some mystery Last Call still available somewhere in the United States. I heard. Is it my stand at home? Is it? <laughs> <laughs> it's a great product. T zone. How many people use T zone? That's another one I love to pick on. I'm not picking on you. I'm just picking on a product. It's, it's it's actually a good product. All of these products you see here are combination products. Multiple active ingredients that are combined to give greater overall efficacy, and typically that's how they work. I question some of the ways they're marketed, but for the most part. They're combined actives, they work good, they have synergistic effects, they broaden your spectrum of control, good products. But the problem is, is that a lot of these products are still on patent and they cost a lot of money. So, if we pay attention to the active ingredients in these products, this Miss NXT, I talked a little bit about that yesterday, it is sulfentrazone and carfentrazone. Quicksilver and Dismiss. Sulfentrazone 4L and Quicksilver. Q4. 2,4-D, Quicksilver, Dicamba, and Sulfentrazone. That's a typo. <laughs> Speed Zone. We have a three-way. If you pay attention on the label, it's actually an ester formulation. With the kicker of Quicksilver. Four Speed XT, probably my favorite product on the market for probably weed control. I used it on Bermuda grass and it will dang it a little bit. But you know me, I'm a big fan of the burning retards, so I did it anyway. <laughs> but you have this little kicker right here, pyroflupin ethyl, also known as octane. So the road I'm leading everybody down is that there are simple steps we can take to be able to produce not all of those, but some of these in-house. For those of you that are concerned with scaling, I cannot tell you how to replicate this to scale in your business. That is something you would have to look at, identify where you stand, and make that decision internally. What we are going to do is we are going to identify the active ingredients in the label. We're going to look at the concentration, the amount of active ingredient per gallon. And we're going to look at the use 
use rate on the label. We're going to search. We're going to find comparable products with comparable active ingredients. Pay attention to that amount per gallon in use rate. We're going to ratio what's in your name <coughs> brand to what you find as your comparable product. That's the math part. I'm sorry. <laughs> then we're going to formulate like mad chemists. But there's going to be a disclaimer right here. <laughs> the label is the law. If you violate your label, that is your ass. Pay attention to that. I said we can't replicate true total yesterday for a couple reasons. We can't find single source iodosulfuron. We can't find single source thiamine And the rate of house of furon on the label is over label rate. So we can't take sedgehammer and add it because what's in tribute total is a higher rate than what we can safely apply as sedgehammer according to the, the sedgehammer label or process. I am sorry, Rod. I don't know why I keep doing that. Come on, man. <laughs> Always jar test, and I'm not, and I will tell you right now, we are not mixing concentrates in a jug. Don't ever do that. If you do do that, don't tell anybody. Act like it never happened. If you start mixing concentrates, the potential for gases or gelatinous materials to form in the, in the can is really high. How many people in here have ever mixed ammonia and bleach? <laughs> it can awesome. kill you. Clean to your there is though. that inherent risk <laughs> when you're talking about mixing herbicides. That's why we do not play with concentrates together. Do not mix ammonia and bleach. That's also part of this disclaimer. <laughs> yeah. What I'm telling you today, I may make a mistake. There may be a mistake in this PowerPoint. You cannot sue me. By sitting in this class, you are accepting I might make a mistake. My lawyer told me to put that in there. Do you have a slide of it? A slide of what? That's right up here. You want to come sign it? No. Sign, yes, sign the TV. It transmits right Yeah, great thing. Right in there. All right, so again, Q4, my least favorite herbicide on the market. We are going to identify the active ingredients. Here we see quinclorac, sulfitrazone, 2,4-D. We are going to identify the amount per gallon. We have 0.75 pounds of our quinclorac. We have 0.06 pounds of sulfitrazone. We have 0.88 pounds of 2,4-D, dimethylamine salt, 2,4-D amine. And we have 0.1 pounds of dicamba. <coughs> We're going to look at our use rates. For a simple math, we're going to use eight pints to the acre, one gallon to the acre. <clears throat> so we start looking at comparable actives. We know when dry. We've got sulfitrazone, dismiss, 2,4-D and dicamba, basically a three-way. Now, we look at the label of dry. We know in one gallon of dry, we have one and a half pounds of quinclora. We know our use rate is 64 fluid ounces to the acre. We know that gives us effectively half of this because this is a half gallon. So therefore, this AI is half. Now we're going to do this math. Yeah. <laughs> so just like I said, we know our rate, eight pints of Q4. That's one gallon of Q4. That's one acre of Q4. That's 0.75 pounds of quinclorac. <laughs> so if in one gallon of drive accelerate we have one and a half pounds of quinclorac, how many gallons of accelerate would go into 0.75 pounds of quinclorac, which would be our <coughs> Q4? So we 
we cross multiply, we take our one and a half, multiply it by x, that will equal one times 0.75. We solve for x, there is a half gallon of drive accelerate in your Q4. So in one acre of our homemade Q4 for cool season turf, we need a half gallon of drive accelerate. A half gallon of drive accelerate is 64 ounces of accelerate per acre in our homemade rate of Q4. <clears throat> we look at our next active ingredient, sulfentrazone. We have 0.06 pounds. We're going to take our comparable product, dismiss. This one, a dismiss or sulfentrazone 4L, contains four pounds of active ingredient per acre. We're going to do some more cross multiplying. This math right here can be replicated over your entire life. I use that all the time. Sister Janine taught me this in the seventh grade. I use that every day. I'll never forget because she kicked my ass. <laughs> she was bigger than me. Um, <laughs> I'm not kidding. Sister Janine, Janine was mean as hell. Yeah. So we're going to cross multiply. We're going to solve for x. We get to the 0.015 gallons of dismiss. That's 1.92 ounces of dismiss in one acre of our homemade Q4. So for those of you that use dismiss on a regular basis, you start thinking about that. You're like, wow, in one acre, you've got, you're putting out 1.92 ounces. What is typical label rate of dismiss? Anybody know? Low rate. Four. Four. Less than half. Oh, okay. 24D. <clears throat> For ease of math, I said let's do, let's do a three way. And we'll double check it. We'll double check the, the dicamba concentration <laughs> with the triplet con concentration. We know in one gallon of triplet, we have 2.38 <clears throat> pounds of 24D. How many gallons of triplet would it take to get to our 0.88 pounds? We're going to solve for x. We know it will take 0.36 gallons of triplet or 46 ounces to make up our one acre of homemade Q4. Where are we mixing this, by the way? In the tank, not in your jug. In water. This goes into water. Let's clarify that. Doing this in your backpack with water already in it. I do not want you inhaling these fumes if you mix concentrates. So we're going to double check what that looks like with the dicamba too, right? So we can we can get single source dicamba. Vanquish, I believe, has a turf label still. Do you know, Ron? Am I making things up? I don't know if it's labeled for turf. I know Banville was not. Yeah, I'm not sure. I don't know. I'm not sure either. But we're going to check what the dicamba looks like. So it would be the same thing. One gallon of triplet, we have 0 0.22 pounds of dicamba. We're taking that right off the label, exactly where it says. We're going to cross multiply it out. That would be 0 0.45 gallons of triplet. <coughs> we're slightly lower on, on dicamba in our homemade Q4 than what Q4 actually has in it. But being slightly under is better than being slightly over. <laughs> this is my favorite part. We got our formula. We've got in our homemade Q4 to make one acre of spray solution at eight pints per acre, the max rate of Q4. There's a half gallon of drive that goes into it, a little less than a half rate dismissed that goes into it and 46 ounces of triplet. So let's do a cost-based analysis. I took this Q4 price from the internet. You may pay something way less, I don't know. But I took all the prices from the internet from the same distributor to try and give a fair analysis. And when we made it ourselves, we saved 37%. I don't know about you, 37% is a shitload of money to me. I'm also cheap. <laughs> so we 
can take this as far as you want to go. Headway. How many people use headway? It's a DMI, a strobe alert, right? There's oxystrope and improvacondazole. There's some things that are going off patent there. <clears throat> some new cheaper forms of oxystrobin. Pricing this out, our cost per thousand at max rate, 331 versus headway, max rate, 1085, a savings of 70%. Oh, oh. <laughs> Dismiss an XC. I go ahead and I break it out for the varying rates over here. Typically, you're saving 44%. to do it yourself. And not pay for the pack. Blind side, we're saving 45%. Speed zone, we're saving 18%. We're not saving a lot there. May not be worth it. And I will tell you, as I've done this, there are some things you are not going to save money. I'm not going to be able to make horsepower as cheap. Rod does. Last call, I can't do as cheap as New Farm does. We were looking at Avenue South with Pinoxalam in it. Sapphire is the comparable single source. I don't even know if it's labeled for turf, but I mapped it out, and Avenue South was even cheap, was cheaper by the name brand. So they're not all wins. You won't always win. But I want to give you the flexibility, the knowledge, the know-how to be able to look at that label and really actually understand what's in it. Understand when someone is trying to sell you something, what is actually in the container. Because while Dismiss NXT may be claimed to be the new greatest thing, when you start looking at the active ingredients, you're like, well, this is a basic shit. You've got a product that burns things down in 72 hours that you move to 24 hours with no greater overall efficacy. Is it worth paying 44% more for two days of speed up time? You might get in some weird grass types. I call St. Augustine a weird grass types because it freaks me out. <laughs> uh, you may see less damage with something like the Smith's XT. The possibility is there. <laughs> So that may be why you're using it. But I don't do weird grass. <laughs> What's up? Another thing that, that stuff like this helps with is you don't need to just have another product just to have another product. Inventory is nobody's favorite thing. You've already got most of the products on their shelves in a single form, but you're paying additionally for the combination product when you already have all four ingredients and you got five bottles and they all do the same thing. Correct, 100%. And to add to that, what I can't stand is I go, so when I was a small guy and I first started out, and I'll never forget, I went into site one, or I may have been talking to a, a Helena rep, and again, I'm committing career suicide. <coughs> it is what it is. And I asked for coin chlorac to go spray some crabgrass. And they came out with a jug of Q4. This is why I'm so bitter about Q4. They came out with Q4, and they said, this works on grab girls. And I said, F you. I asked for Queen Flora. I don't have it, but I do have this. I said, bullshit. I want Queen Flora. I don't have it. I got this. This is what we sell. This is what I'm offering you. And I was so mad that they wanted me to pay that inflated price for that product, but the only thing I wanted to do was go after crabgrass. I don't need Q4. I don't need 2,4-D. I don't need sulfentrazone to spray crabgrass. If I needed to, to kill it faster, yeah, I could add my own sulfentrazone to it. If I needed to give a quick response to make whoever at the home a little happier to know that I've been there and sprayed something <coughs> 72 hours later, yeah, I can add it in there. But at the time, I didn't need that. I just needed the active ingredient to solve the problem I was trying to solve. I don't need all of those other. Why do I need 2,4-D and coin chloride combined to spray crabgrass? What effect does 2,4-D have on crabgrass? <coughs> Why am I spraying? I want control over everything that goes on my lawn. There is a responsibility we face as applicators 
to make sure when we are targeting weeds, one, we actually kill them when we spray them, and two, we kill them because we chose the correct active ingredient to kill that weed. I can go kill crabgrass with 2,4-D. Is it safe? Hell no, because I'm spraying concentrate on the yard, and I'm killing everything. <laughs> It's doable, but it's not the right thing to do. So why spray something like Q4 if I'm using it to kill a weed that it's not designed to kill? It makes no <coughs> sense. I'll let you contact me if you want to contact, if you want a copy of this, but I'll tell you what I did put together because I don't know why. I put together a growing database of different products and different active ingredients, different cost breakouts of things you can do at home. You email me, ask me for the Roll Your Own database, the Roll Your Own cheat sheet, and it will give you sample rates of different materials that go in here. A lot of them I showed up there. I doubt there's hardly anything new that was on there that is not on here. Please surge Surge. How many people use Surge? Yes. <laughs> oh, yes. So, there we are. There we are. Triple Crown. How many people use Triple Crown? Yeah. I think I use some some cipher. Is uh, so I was looking at making my own triple crown because of the cost per thousand of triple crown. Mm -hmm. And when I was talking to the FMC rep, they said, "Hell no, you can't do that." Well, <laughs> well, well what's it called? They only sell the standardized. That's what I was. Told. Yeah. So. I don't know, and I, and I honestly, I didn't spend a lot of time looking into this, but that one, so that one of the AIs in that triple crown is the Zeta Cyphermethrin. Mm -hmm. Well, I can get just Cyphermethrin. Mm -hmm. I don't know that there's a big difference between the Zeta Cyphermethrin and just the Cyphermethrin. Yeah, yeah, so, I mean, it's like going to work the same. Yeah, you can, you can yeah. mix them up. You've got oil-based and water-based, but mix them separate in the tank and they don't run. Yeah. Yeah, 61% yeah. 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 That's why I have a No, you cannot do Defender. You cannot do Defender. I can't remember off the top of my head what the active ingredient is, but it's single source, so you can't do that. There are some products that are single source. They don't have a single AI, or you can't find another product that has that single AI. And it's just something you have to play with to understand. You know, I was. I told Rod, I said, I'm going to pick on him and I'm going to go through his product list. The problem was I did in that sometimes I would say 4% and sometimes I'm paying 4% more to do it myself. So kudos to New Farm. Yeah. So far it's super expensive, right? So but I, it's, it works super fast. I wrote with a little filter and also the vitamin. Mm -hmm. Is that a, do, do they play well? I mean, a little filter and the vitamin? And, 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 and Safari. Dino Tepron? Dino Tepron. Yeah. Uh -huh. And I get the quick uptake, but then I get the... Um, the the answer from the Imidacloprid? Yeah, and a lot cheaper. Yeah. We, we mix that for funds. I do that But we would add, add, we would do Imidacloprid and buy them together and we'd save a ton of money, but we would also add an UV inhibitor for the Imidacloprid, um, and that's worked really well for us for... That's a great idea. Yeah. That's a really good idea. I've never heard anybody doing that. What's the growth regulator? What's that? Which one's that? The third one? It's it's basically an, an adjuvant that's got a UV inhibitor in it. So anytime we run a medicloper, we'll add a UV inhibitor in there because it's Florida. You know, well it doesn't matter really. It's sunny everywhere, but you know, it breaks down that medicloper so quick. That that really slows it way down. It gives us better. We got the board, son. Board. Yeah. 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 Y
All right, does anybody have any questions? I will get off from up here. What's up, Aaron? Hey! So I know you were saying not to make <laughs> chemicals together. So I run, I have a broadleaf flurry that I make. Uh huh. Um, and I do mix it all together with, you know, I'll do uh, MSM, 24D, um, and then Octane. And then I'll put a surfactant in. You mix it a certain way, it's perfectly fine. So if I want to mix, like, a dismiss an ST, can I add, you know, basically not have it as, and I know legally, you know, you can just throw it up your time. So if I put, I, I make the, the mix easy, so I'll put water in it to where the guys put in two ounces per gallon. Just easy mixing. So could I, in theory, probably shouldn't do it, but could I make, like, a dismiss an ST the same way and make it easier to mix to the guys if I'm adding water as an in <laughs> uh, I will say what we used to do, and uh, this is another. Uh, but we did the same thing with monument and uh, three way. So we would make a little slurry, and you know, 37 ounces went into three gallons in a backpack, and that was just how we kept the math easy. Because it's hard to weigh 15 grams yeah. without looking like a cokehead. Yeah. <laughs> what we do with some of those specialized mix is each branch will have like a 50 gallon tank that does nothing but it is just a specialized mix and so you make a 50 gallon batch at a time and everybody has um, has the backpacks on the truck and they just fill up with that rather than them trying to do their little you know tip of a fork or yeah, and, and when it comes to scalability of this, I'm, I'm, I'm not here to make your life easier. I don't know how to do it, but I will save you some money. But 50 gallon, <laughs> 50 gallon tanks do help. Um, you can just slap the label on it, um, have the same guy mix it every time so there's no mess ups. Because you can see where this could be a mess up really quick, right? <laughs> it's not for everybody. It's really not. And so uh, one example is just, you know, some, some of the dry products come with their own measuring cup and things like that. Yes. If you're a guy that's mixing the tank, things that dry and liquid are the same ounces. Yes. That will be messed up. <laughs> <laughs> it will. Yes. Or even MSM, that's different. Depending on the size of the granules, you can have one. It'll have, you know, you'll basically pour like an extra third of an ounce. Oh, use the wrong measuring cup. How many people use benzofurane methylene here? <coughs> okay, as a general rule of thumb, I kind of, I kind of talk about this. A half ounce to the acre kills weeds. One ounce to the acre kills trees. Two ounces to the acre f's shit up. <laughs> That's what they spray down railroads to kill brush and vines. Usually they'll combine it with something like Mojave or something. BGA. What's that? <coughs> that guy said uh, it, it doesn't happen because they told me it doesn't happen. And they said, I spray around oak trees and it didn't happen. And I, I said, I spray it and I see it happen. Because I went two, three weeks after the application and you see all this die back on this level. And then I know what it was. But then when I realized the guy that told me it wasn't happening, he was hitting a tree that was 60 by 60 on a finger iron. And I said, yeah, it's not enough. On a finger island, you can probably spring 100 square feet of grass compared when they in an open park when their roots are actually in 20,000 feet of grass. And I said, that's the amount of use it. So you get used to maybe on finger islands and it's not going to do anything to the tree because it's not enough. But when you use it in open areas, those trees' roots are spreading two, three times the size of the crown of the tree. So now you're putting a lot more at the ingredients under that tree. That's when I see it when it happens. I became the applicator that I became because I made a series of really shitty mistakes, huge mistakes. When I lived in Georgia, we were doing everything we could to grow as quickly as possible. And we were trying to simplify our centipede program and got the bright idea I had the worst wild hair in my ass. And I would fully take responsibility and ownership for this. Not being super familiar with the chemistry of metal here on, I said I'm going to spray centipede with it. No big deal. Play before it, right? Except I chose the rate of one ounce to the acre. That's high. 
and I'm going to spray it in transition, directly violating what the label says. So I go out, I light up a day's worth of yards. They were the worst yards. They were new sales. I needed a big cleanup. I didn't want to spend the money on Celsius at the time. Three weeks later, everything's turned green. I start getting calls from that route. And my grass is turning green. I'm like, oh boy. I said, yeah, my tree doesn't have any leaves on it. <laughs> 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 I can't help you there. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> so we get the inspector out to take a look at it and see what's going on. And he's like, hey, what'd you apply? I'm like, oh, man, my records are here. And he was like, oh boy. And thirteen thousand dollars later, and we had to cut down two trees and resod three yards. I can tell you another horror story: playing with triclopyr in, in an ester-based formulation. <laughs> I was doing brush control, and I tell you this just to tell you the brevity and the, the seriousness and the realness of what we do. Uh, making a application, I, I was looking at my temperature. We were going to be getting up to about 80 degrees that day. I was going to start early in the morning. They were calling for rain later that afternoon. Not really high temperature. I said, all right, this is good. We had like a three to five mile an hour wind. Everything was great. So I go out. I make my application. Everything's good. I didn't pay attention to the weather the rest of the day, right? Well, the wind slowed down really, really, really low. We got up to 85. Humidity kind of bounced like this. We had really high winds come through in the afternoon, late in the afternoon, and we only got just a sprinkling of rain that was originally called for. About four weeks later, that homeowner that I sprayed for sends me a conversation between himself and his neighbor behind him. And his neighbor behind him, this is from me a rod or how far these, these houses are apart. And I start going through this email, and she is documenting it like a college professor is documenting a case study with photos of daily time last, last differences in the way her red buds were defoliating on her property and how it gradually got better as she went around the side of her house through her front yard. And she was documenting the effects of temperature inversion of using an ester-based herbicide and movement. And I look at the name, and the name at the bottom is Sue Hamilton, Dr. Sue Hamilton, who is the head of horticulture at the University of Tennessee and a former professor of mine. <laughs> <laughs> and she is reaming this applicator for being so stupid and uncareful. And I had a really hard pill to swallow to go knock on her door, and she say, Yes? I'm like, I don't know if you remember me. <laughs> Quit mumbling me. Who are you? Why are you at my door? And your kid is screaming in your car, by the way. I'm like, yeah, I know. Yeah. Guilty trees. Yeah. Like, what? <laughs> what? I was like, that case study you sent out with dude, man. That was me. I made that application. I fucked up. And she was like, oh, really? I was like, yes, yes. I'm sorry. I don't know. I just... I, up. It's just like, well, come on, honey, let's go look at it. So we go back there, and I'm in this back. <laughs> Smoke. Everything was defoliated back there that was tree like. And uh, so we walk around, and she's like, this red butt was imported from so and so and so and so and so and so. And I got this one when I made this trip country, and it's bred particularly by this one specific breeder. And then I got this one here to commemorate my father when he passed away. And I got this one over here, and I mean, I'm just like, I can't die fast enough. <laughs> <laughs> and we get to the end of it, and, and you know, she, she tells me, calm down, you don't panic yet. Uh, and says, this is what we're going to do. We're going to wait. We're going to see if things leak back out. They may be okay. And I will already tell her that, but I knew she didn't told me that. So I did. I calmed down and we stayed in touch and the trees refoliated and they survived. 
So I got extremely lucky I didn't lose my license. I got extremely lucky I didn't lose my license in Augusta killing oak trees. There is very real seriousness to what we do. We can ruin things really quickly. And we, as applicators, have to be stewards of the environment. It is our responsibility. There is no joke about taking an herbicide that can kill a human and everything that could possibly grow on the ground and carry it around on our truck like it's no big deal. It's no big deal to us. We're desensitized to it. You think about Dyquat. How many people use Dyquat? Dyquat is fucking deadly. It works. If anybody's heard of Paraquat, it's one of the leading ways of suicide in third world countries. They drink it to kill themselves. It is bad news. It takes a very tiny amount. And this shit went. I don't even bother. How many times do you get lazy and like, damn it, I left my glove in the cab. Boop, 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 boop. I done it. So there's a very real seriousness. Take this serious. Yes, you may be saving money, but yes, this is risky. Understand your risk. You have to make that decision whether or not it's worth taking this risk. I can't make business decisions for you. You have to. And that's it. <laughs> Who's next? Run! Yeah. If you're going to make your own Q4, double the rate of sulfetrazone so you guys can kill Yes! Yes! Please. <laughs> 